Okay, so let's take a look at how to check something out from Git, and then how to do a very basic Git workflow. So Git is a version control system. If you've ever used Microsoft Word or uh, Google text editing, whatever that's called, I forget, uh, there is a way to look at the history and edits that other people have made. I've personally never made use of this, but I know that a bunch of other people have. So if you've ever encountered that, that's a very primitive form of, of version control. There are other older version control systems. When I was in grad school, we started off with something called RCS, which was a directory-based system, and then moved to CVS, and then SVN, and then Git. Git is much more powerful than any of those. So let's go to this web page. It's on GitHub, which is a place where lots of Git repositories are stored. Lots of open source projects are stored on GitHub. We're doing our homework on GitHub. So this is a user called M.J. Denkowski, Michael Denkowski. He was a researcher at Carnegie Mellon, and now he works somewhere else. But this is his GitHub repository, and it's got a readme file in it, and it's got a Python program in it. It's a one-line Python program. This uh, program just looks at a text file of restaurant names and randomly picks one to tell you where to go to lunch so that you don't have to think about it. Okay? All right. So I want you to go to GitHub and make sure you're logged in. Okay? So log into GitHub if using your GitHub username. And then you should see your little icon up here. I'm Dowobiha. That's my GitHub username, so make sure you're signed in. And then if you're signed in, you'll see this little icon here that says fork. Okay? Does everybody see that? Okay? Click it. Okay, I already did this, so I'm not going to do it again. But it'll say, where should we fork this repository? And there should be a something here that says your username. Click on that. Okay? There will be a little cool little icon that says it's cloning it or forking it. So you are making your own personal copy of the LunchPy repository on GitHub. Okay, we're not making a copy locally yet. We're just making your own personal copy to be stored in your own personal GitHub repository. So we're going to try using Git, but to do interesting things in Git, we want to have control over the repository so that we can do things like push. If we tried to push changes to these files to this directory, it would fail because we don't have permission. We'd have to ask Michael for permission and ask him to add us as, as give us right permission to make changes to his GitHub repository. And in some cases, that makes sense. I'm a, I'm a contributor to a bunch of GitHub repositories. So on the Moses GitHub repository. It's, a, it's an open source machine translation system. I have write permissions on the Moses repository because I asked the people who are running that repository for permission. They know me. They know that I've contributed to that open source project, and so they gave me permission. Some people will do that. Some people won't. But here's another mechanism. So we've made our own copy. So now, if you go to githubs.com slash your username, then there will be a repository that you should be able to see called LunchPy. Okay? Or LunchPy. Okay? So github.com slash your username slash LunchPy. Okay? Everybody good so far? Okay. All right. So now, see the big green button that says clone or download? Click on it. You're going to want to use HTTPS. Highlight that. Copy it to the clipboard. Okay. And then in your terminal session, you're going to SSH back into the server. Okay. And now I'm going to use the get command to clone my local copy of that directory. Okay? 
Yes. So I'm using putty um, to get to all of this, and I usually can't just copy something in there. I have to write it out. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. If you're using putty, then there can be problems in copying and pasting. I think there's a mechanism to get around that that you might want to do some, it might be worth your while to do some research to figure out how to paste into putty. Uh, if you search on YouTube or Google, there is likely a way to do it. I don't know the answer of how. Uh, so for the moment, you might just have to type it in. But in any case, it's going to be git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash your github username slash lunchpie.git. Okay. All right. So now I can cd into a directory that now exists called lunchpy. Okay. And I can ls, and there, lo and behold, is a readme file that I can look at with less. And a Python program that I can also look at with less. That's really ugly. He wrote it all on one line, okay? Which is fine, but the whole point of this exercise is to practice, and so we're gonna make some edits to this file, and then we're gonna check those edits back in, commit them, and then push them to our GitHub repositories, okay? All right, so is everybody to this point so far? Everybody with me? Okay, so let's edit. I'm going to use Emacs because I learned Emacs way before I knew about VI. You guys should all use VI unless you already know Emacs. Um, I'm using Emacs because that's what I know and I know all of the commands like how to search and replace and shortcuts. Emacs and VI are both extremely powerful editors. The reason that we're using them rather than something simpler like Nano is all is both VI and Emacs have the ability to do lots of really powerful things if you take the time to learn the keyboard shortcuts. So if you learn about 15 or so keyboard shortcuts, you can do things like global search and replace. You can do things like move to the third paragraph, jump forward four spaces or four words, and then delete from there to the end of the line in about a very short number of key presses. Okay? All right, so let's edit this. And everywhere where there's a semicolon, I'm just going to delete it and turn it into a new line. So I'm going to delete it, make a new line. Make another new line. There, I made an edit. Okay? Yes? Okay, log back. So you might need to log back into the server. At the top it says SSH, my head ID, but actually inside there's something that I can't see. Uh, try closing the session and creating a new session and logging, logging back in, in, in into a new session if you're having trouble. Uh, remember that it'll be something like this SSH, your net ID, at the name of the server and then it should ask you for your password to log in. And then recall that if you need to, you clone the repository. If you haven't already done that. And then I'm going to CD back into LunchPy. Okay, so I made an edit. How do I know that I made the edit? Well, I could look at the file and verify. Made the edit. But I can also do something else. Git is a version control system. So I can say git status. And it's going to tell me that something changed. Okay? So it's going to say modified lunch.py. Okay? So I've made a change to this file. I haven't told git to record my change. I haven't committed that change, and I haven't sent the change upstream to GitHub yet. Okay. I can also do this, git log, 
and I can look at all of the changes that have been made in this repository from the time it was created until now. So note that these were all changes made by the original creator. But I have the whole copy of the history right here on my local directory. Okay. All right. So I can scroll down. Looks like those are the three check. Those are the three changes. So for every change that I make that I check in, there will be a log message that you can look at later and that other people can look at later. And you're going to sign your name. So when you created your .git config file, this is why. So that the changes that you make when you check in commits will have your name and contact information associated with them, along with the timestamp and date of that change. Okay. Remember, I did Control L to clear the screen and go up. Okay. So git status showed me what was going on. I'm now going to do git add. It tells me to do that right here. Changes not yet not staged for commit. Use git add and then the name of the file to update what will be committed. Okay? All right. So you can think of this as uh, a warehouse. Okay? So we've got we're sitting at the warehouse. We've got something that needs to be put in a box to be sent off with the next shipment. Okay, so I'm going to git add lunch.py. That just put my change into a box. Git now knows that my change has been modified and it's ready to be committed. It's ready to be sent off into the, into the, into the wide world. I haven't sent it out into the wide world yet. It's still only local. Okay, now... I could reset it if I want to. I could take it out of the box, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say git commit dash m is a message. If I don't do dash m, an editor window, vi by default, will come up and you could type your change, type your message into vi. I like to use the dash m so that I can just keep it all there. Okay, so what did I do? I added new lines. Okay. Descriptive, enter, tells me that I made changes, tells me how much I changed, and now if I do get status again, it says, your branch is ahead of origin master by one commit. Origin master in this case is wherever I cloned it from. So in this case, my copy of LunchPy on GitHub. Okay, if I do git log, I will see that on this local copy of my repository, my commit was made. There's my commit message. Here's the time and date that I did it. Here's a really long and unwieldy hash code that is the name of my commit. So if I copy that, I can do git show, put that long unwieldy thing there, or just the beginning part, if I did git show 74edd, it's going to give me the same thing. And it shows me my changes. Okay, so the red is what I deleted, the green is what I added. Okay, so I'm going to quit that by pressing Q. Okay, so now, git status tells me there's nothing to commit. So now, I've taken my change, I've put it into the box, I've taken the box, I've put it on the, on the outgoing, whatever that's called, at a warehouse, the, the truck dock. I've put it on the dock for the truck, and all I have to do is tell the truck driver to take it and go away. Okay? So now I'm going to say git push origin master. Okay? So I'm telling Git to push my local changes to the master branch of origin, where origin here is wherever I cloned it from. I hit enter, asks me for my GitHub username, asks me for my GitHub password. 
I got my password wrong. I try it again. And it is sending my change up to GitHub. Okay. How can I tell that I did it right? How can I tell that I succeeded? Well, I can do git status again. And it says my branch is up to date with origin master. There's nothing to commit. I haven't made any local changes since the last thing. It's ready to go. And I can double check by going back to GitHub, refreshing. Now I see there's four commits. If I click on there, I can see my commit. And also, if I click on the file, I can see that there's a new line. So I've been following on doing all of this, but I just did the git push origin master, and it tried to send it to uh, Denkowski's. Okay, if it tries to send it to the original Denkowski repository, then that means that when you, caught, when you clicked on the little green uh, button right here, you are still on Michael Denkowski's GitHub page to do it, and not your own. There's a way to fix it, though. Okay, so you, you could delete the whole repository and then start over and clone it from the, reg, from the correct one. Or, if you don't want to do that, you could do ls-a. Anybody remember what dash a does for ls? It shows all files, even hidden files. Okay? There's a directory called .git. Okay? Inside .git, there's a bunch of stuff, including all of your history, all of your changes. Everything lives there. Everything about your repository, except the actual files, lives in that directory, including the configuration. If you edit that, you could change so here you see my remote is called origin, which is why I typed origin when I did my push. And you can change, so right here yours, if you clone from the Denkowski repository, will say MJ Denkowski. So you would edit that file to have your URL instead of his. How did you go there again? How did I go, how did I open this file? So I did Emacs, or you could do VI and then dot .git config while I was inside the LunchPy directory. Now you have to be careful when you're doing that. You're kind of playing with fire editing that file. But if you know what you're doing, it's completely safe. There's alternate ways of doing it. You can, there's a git command that will edit this file for you. So I believe it's git remote remove origin and then you would do git remote add origin with a new URL. Okay. All right, so uh, now we've got, now we made some edits, okay? But we never tried running this thing. Let's try running it, okay? Dot slash, well, wait, let's check. ls dash l, yep, it's executable, okay? It's got an X permission. I also know this because it's green, and the way I have bash configured, things that are executable show up in a special bold color. Okay, so let's run LunchPy. Oh, it's giving me some options, okay? Uh, I can either provide options or I can edit a .lunchrc file. Let's do that. Okay, so open vi tilde slash dot lunchrc. So it's going to be a hidden file in my home directory and it's going to be called .lunchrc. I'm going to go into insert mode. I'm going to put a couple of restaurants. I like eating lunch at the bread company. Where else? Where else? Uh, what's the place right next to the bread company? Espresso Royale. I can't spell that. The other place. What's the, the, the place? The empanada place. Manolos. Manolos. I don't know. Is that right? And... Uh, Panera, yeah, well, no, no, I, 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 never, I never bothered to go up to Green Street. I always eat on this side of campus. Uh, 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 Mary Ann's. Okay, all right. And then I'm going to save the file, press Q. Now I'm going to run lunch by again. It picked a place for me to have lunch. I didn't even have to think about it. 
Run it again. Still bread company. Okay, now I'm going to get them in all of Okay. All right. Okay, we've got two minutes left. We're going to do one last thing that you're not going to necessarily understand what we're going to do, but you can come back and watch this after you've read the next couple of readings, and this will make way more sense. Okay, but all of these things are going to be topics that are going to be covered in the next couple of readings. Okay, so I'm going to make a new directory. I'm going to make it in my home directory. I'm going to make it hidden. I'm going to call it dot local. I probably already have a dot local. You probably don't. I'm going to use a dash p so that there won't be an error in case I already have it. Bin. Okay, so make dir dash p sl tilde slash dot local slash bin. Okay, and now I'm going to copy lunchpy into that directory. Note that I just hit escape period to pull back the last argument of the last command that I did. Okay, and now there's a copy of lunchpy there. Okay, now I'm going to edit a file called dash bat dot bash rc in my home directory. And then at the very end of the file, I'm going to add a line called export path equals, and I'm going to say tilde dot local slash bin. Now, you'll find out more about this when you do the readings, but this is going to allow me to do something really cool. It'll make it so that I don't have to type the full path to lunchpy anymore. It'll make it so that I can just type lunchpy and it'll work. And then I'm going to tell this the rest of it to use my existing path. I'm going to save it. I'm going to exit. I'm going to SSH back in. And now I'm going to type lunchpy. Lunchpy not found. What did I do wrong? Oh, it was lunch.py. Okay. What, what did that do? Well, it, it said echo path. All of the places, all of the directories in my path are, contain commands that I can just type without typing the full path to that command. Okay, So this is showing a couple of things that you'll get to soon. One of them is the use of the export command. One of them is the use of bash variables. Path was my variable. Uh, and one of them is the use of a .bashrc file to customize your bash session. Okay, So that is all for today. I'm going to exit out, and that's what we've got, and I'm going to see again if I can end this without 